Alright guys, welcome in. We're going to be doing a little walkthrough of the changes we've made in this build, compare it to what it was like in the previous build, and just kind of go over quality and life improvements and different stuff that's happening with this game so that you guys can understand what's going on. We're also going to implement a game manual in the Discord where you're going to get a full rundown of each of the controls, how the controls work, and what's going on with them. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Rabbit dog. Should have put him down years ago. So, the first thing you're going to notice is a change to the health bar system. Instead of having a generic rune or a placeholder rune, we now have runes that specifically identify certain abilities. Our ability system is unique to this game, and I have not seen it implemented in any other game, and it's unique in the fact that, that your abilities that you have access to, we open the menu here, we have seven abilities. Five are available in this current build, and all of these are locked. You unlock abilities depending on which enemy type is aggroed onto your character. Right now, we only have the default ability available, so we'll select that one. The default ability is like a lunge attack. So if I hit the left bumper here, see a nice big long lunge attack. The next thing we implemented was a camera fix. People had a lot of complaints about the old camera system. The way that it collided with certain objects made the camera kind of janky, kind of shaky, and kind of uh, made visibility an issue for that game. So now what we have is a scanner on the character that scans objects to his right side. And if there's an object too close to his right, the camera pans closer to the center, or the camera pans leftward, putting the character more to the center of the screen. This is going to make it easier to see during hallways, stairwells, anywhere that's a tight corridor. It's going to improve visibility and have less chance of collision and ugly visibility. So just to demonstrate, we can go up to these barrels. As I rotate over, we hit that trigger. Camera shoots the character to the center of the screen. This looks pretty good. Everything's nice and tight. You can maneuver here and have reasonable visibility. As you back away, the camera returns to normal. Once again, it triggers. It doesn't trigger. So, pretty interesting system, works pretty well. have our enemy type. Now you will notice on the screen we had a flash on our HUD. This is a notification that we unlocked a new ability. Now the AI has a new capability of fainting which makes attacking a little bit harder to deal with. But it also as a trade-off, we made him less likely to block your attacks. So we want to encourage the player to stop, to be less turtling, and to be more aggressive in their strikes. So we make it a little bit harder to defend, and we make it a little bit easier to play offense. We have here a double door system. So the previous build, you opened one door at a time. We've now created a pairing system. So when we place two doors next to each other in the world, they're actually paired together, so that when I open this door, it opens both of them at once. Even though they are two separate objects, we can pair them together and we can open both doors at once. You'll notice now we have AI sitting on benches. We have sitting on benches, we have leaning on walls, we have various different systems that allow for a more immersive experience with the AI. Harry's system is still in full effect. 
and the most effective way to deal with enemies is through the parry system. All the AI in this game used to have a random roam system. Now they have predetermined patrol routes, which means the AI will no longer wander into weird spots and will no longer have peculiar issues where they are not where they are supposed to be in the game. We've also updated the special effects to be a little bit more performance friendly and we are using static meshes instead of emitters. The flames still look very realistic, the smoke still looks pretty solid, but instead of using an emitter we have a giant static mesh with tanning material. It's a big performance boost, that's really all you need to know. These enemies have lower health, but they do have a random health pool. I think that was in the last build, but to cover it quickly, they have a range at which they generate their health when they spawn in. So you can't rely on specific combinations to completely take out certain enemy types. You have, there is an element of randomness. Not all strikes are created equal, and therefore you do not want to approach it that way. Who aggroed onto me? You did. As you can see, this guy didn't die. Alright, so I think that's everyone except for the final guy. Let's go heal at the shrine quick. This is a healing shrine, and this will replenish our health. This gives you 70 health, which is enough health to give you get you into the full health category where you can fully heal. Our health system, as explained in the previous build, works on wounding. So you have a light wound and a mortal wound system. On light wound, your health and stamina are capped at 70%, and at mortal wound, your health and stamina is capped at 40%. Which means not only can you not heal on your own to that level, you have to be very careful on how you manage your stamina. If you get into exhaustion, you're going to have an issue. So let's go fight the main boss here. So as you can see, we had a new AI, we have a new ability, so let's go ahead and use it. We were able to defeat the enemy. We are now in exhaustion mode. This means we can't move as quickly, our attacks are slower, and we cannot block. That is a real problem when facing certain enemy types. Now, our, we changed our ability. The enemy we fought died. So now our, our ability is permanently locked until we switch to a new ability. We're now back to normal. We can come through here, open the gate, and we can see enemies roaming around the level, birds flying, a whole bunch of stuff in this new system. 
There's a lot of stuff to explore in this build. There's a lot more going on. And there's some fun physics jank. Uh, this ability has a great uh, system of just knocking swords in the air because of all the momentum your character has. It sends swords absolutely flying in directions, and it's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, this is how the current build works. It feels fantastic. Uh, the predetermined routes make it a lot more consistent. And it just leads to a greater system. We're bleeding right now. Because we're bleeding, we're going to be losing health over time. Eventually, I'm going to implement a bandage system so that you can heal from bleed, so you don't have to lose all your health. It's not in the game yet. So you're just going to have to suck it up. However, as a fun little bonus, there's no fall damage, so you can just do this. Without any issues. And heal. This thing has about a two minute cooldown, so you can't spam this. But this is your heal shrine, so if you want to get your health, you gotta work to access it, and then you can come back to it whenever. It's fine for the current build. Hope you guys enjoy. This has been the run through of the bottom part of the harbor. We still have the top of the harbor to explore. There's a cave with a secret boss to explore, and there's an entire compound in the auction that you can explore. Along with enemies patrolling the roads in the countryside. There's a lot to go on in this build. There's a lot to play around with. There's a lot to see. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, performance seems to be better. Frame rate feels very stable. I'm really happy with how the performance is. I'm not seeing any dips here. Uh, in the editor, we had some dips. In here, this seems to be really stable. It feels really smooth. The frame rate looks awesome. I'm very happy with it. We went a little heavy on the LOD, I think, but uh, it helps with the performance, so I'm happy with it. So, without further ado, thank you guys so much for hanging out. We are going to be working on a Discord page today, a whole bunch of stuff. This video is kind of the walkthrough of all the changes that have been made. Um, one last thing before we do close, I don't think we covered this, we have an options menu. The option menu is a little bit broken on the main menu. It loads, but when you close the menu, uh, the, it does not focus back to the main menu key, so you kind of get stuck in the main menu. I would advise against using the main menu or using the options menu in the main menu and stick to using the options menu here. And we don't have a lot of options. You can invert your Y axis, so looking up is looking down and looking down is looking up. A lot of people like that feature. Um, I recommend using a mouse for this and we also have a master volume control. So if I don't want to hear anything, I can turn the volume right off. If I want to be super loud, I can crank it up super loud. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you want to see more content, if you want to see the development of this game, and the different stuff we're implementing, please give consider giving this channel a follow. We do pretty regular live streams of game development updates and kind of go through the work and the process of how this stuff works and give you guys a little bit of insight how we make a game in Unreal Engine. Um, we also do game streams and hangouts, so feel free to check those out as well. But yes, we do quite a bit of game development and we stream most of it so that you guys can see how much work goes into making a game, what it looks like, and kind of just see how we kind of, we learn on the job. So there's still very much a lot of stuff we're learning, but we have gotten this far. I feel pretty confident about releasing a game. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and we'll catch you on the next one.